Hi everybody, Sean from Media Assault here, and it is October. It's time for me to do my yearly annual Halloween series where I will review four horror films throughout the month of October. Yes, I will get this completed. I realize that I have not exactly been lighting up YouTube with videos this year, but I am definitely going to get my Halloween series done as I look forward to it every single year. Uh, my first entry for this year is Mary Shelley's Frankenstein as adapted by James Whale, the director and starring Boris Karloff. And I can't really get a good shot of this without some glare off the computer screen. But as you can see, this is the 75th anniversary edition. And this is a really cool uh, set. Comes with two discs. And uh, just a really, really cool uh, digitally remastered version of the film. Um, for some reason, I can't get it to close. There we go. Uh, this is part of the Universal Legacy series. That's the back. Um, and I was actually very surprised. This is a film that was made in 1931. And when you say to somebody Frankenstein, typically they think of the creature, uh, which is technically Frankenstein's monster. I'm probably not shocking anybody with that knowledge. But but uh, when you mention when you mention Frankenstein, the 1931 film, most people go, oh yeah, I've seen it or I know it. And I was actually kind of surprised because I thought I had seen it from beginning to end multiple times and watching it today, it was like watching a brand new movie. I apparently either had forgotten a lot of it or most of it, or I really had never sat down and watched it from beginning to end uh, within the last 20, 25, 30 years. I really was surprised by the amount of stuff going on in this film that I either attributed to other movies or didn't know was in this film. So I was actually very pleasantly surprised when I watched Frankenstein this morning. Uh, it is, like I said, from 1931, directed by James Whale. Uh, it stars Colin Clive, of course, Boris Karloff as the creature, and Dwight Fry as Fritz. And um, Fritz, I think most people, when they see a picture of Fritz, would call him Igor, but his name in the film is Fritz. He is, of course, Dr. Frankenstein's assistant who bumblingly uh, steals the brain of a criminal to put into this reanimated corpse that has been assembled by Dr. Frankenstein. And, of course, then Dr. Frankenstein has to uh, suffer the consequences of the... Um, his creation, I guess, uh, by reanimating this corpse with a criminal brain. It's it's a very simple story. The movie is only 75 minutes long or something, but it tells a very effective, very quick-paced, very effective story. I mean, it's, it's simple to the point, like many of the films back in the 30s were. There wasn't a lot of backstory. There wasn't a lot of dawdling and dialogue and ridiculous, overblown stuff. If, if this was to be remade today as an epic film, I bet you any money it would be two and a half hours long. There would be romantic subplots out the yin-yang. There would be numerous uh, exposition. This film has a little bit of each of those things. It has some exposition. It has a romantic backstory. Um, but it's all kept very minimalistic. And that's one of the things that I enjoyed about it. It was a quick movie. You sat down, you watch it, it's done. But it still sticks with you. And is it scary? Well, in today's day and age, it's definitely very mild. This could be shown probably to children and they probably wouldn't be scared by it necessarily. But it is effectively chilling in the performance of Boris Karloff. I think he uh, does a great job bringing uh, an aura of menace to this character. Uh, but yet there's a lot of vulnerability to the creature. Because everything that happens in this film isn't his fault. He didn't get asked by anybody to be invited to the world, and he's been assembled out of pieces parts, basically. Uh, and he's just trying to make sense of what's in front of him, and he reacts as you would expect a, a weak, old, living creature to act uh, with, with a survival instinct. Uh, and of course, he's gifted with that criminal brain, so of course there's also some issues with that. I really enjoyed the film. I thought it was it was well put together. Uh, definitely a product of its time, with the you know the soundtrack and the the technology that was used to make it. Uh, 
yes, for modern audiences, it may look extremely dated, and of course it, it is, but it's still a masterpiece in my mind. I think that uh, the direction by James Whale is really quite good, especially a lot of the dolly sequences that he uses in some of the scenes. Uh, the sets are fantastic, even though it's obvious that it was most of it was shot on a soundstage. Uh, the sets are just absolutely fantastic. The acting is hilarious, and I can't remember the actor's name, but the the actor who plays Baron von Frankenstein or Baron Frankenstein, uh, Doctor Frankenstein's father, he is a super uh, injection of comic relief into this film. He is more than welcome in this film. So I can't I can't praise this highly enough. A great way to start off my Halloween series this October, the 75th anniversary edition of Boris Karloff in Frankenstein. And I uh, highly recommend this edition if you don't have it. If uh, You can also pick up the Universal Horror series on Blu-ray, which I also have. Um, I just happened to pick this off the shelf and watch it today. But definitely a 10 out of 10. And uh, definitely you want to know your classic horror films and definitely give this one a watch. Don't think you've seen it, uh, and definitely pay particular particular attention to the performance of Boris Karloff. I can't stress that enough. So there you go. That's my review of Frankenstein from 1931. Stay tuned for three more horror reviews in the month of October in my Halloween series. Thanks again for watching, everybody. And if you haven't done so already, please comment, rate, and uh, subscribe if you haven't done that yet. Take it easy, everybody.